Hi everybody, this is Larry up in Brandon, Minnesota. Want to talk to you today about building your very own self-watering rain gutter growth system. If you've never built one or never had very good luck with gardening, you got to give it a try. Try building just one. You'll be hooked. Okay, I want to walk through this step by step exactly to show you how to build this unit. Now you can click on my name and go to uh, on my YouTube channel here and it'll go to my main page and start playing a video which shows pictures and descriptions of how to do it. But I want to go through it a little more extensively with you to show you exactly how to build the unit. Okay, the unit itself is 10 feet long because you're using a standard uh, rain gutter and I use a vinyl rain gutter. It's a, a snap-on version I get from a Menards here. There's different brands all over the country. I like the vinyl because uh, uh, I can glue the ends on. I know there's some that have rubber ends that go on. Various ones on my brother got some that he could glue on down in um, Nashville. But uh, if you check around, you can find them. You could use metal, but I wouldn't really want to do that. Uh, especially if you later on want to add any additives or uh, any uh, fertilizers, might have some salt, might have some kind of reactive uh, thing to it. The vinyl works very good and they're pretty inexpensive. Anyway, here's what we want to do to start. You want to go get, okay, now depending on what you want to do, if you want the standard unit, like I said, is 10 foot, you could go together with someone. And uh, I built a mini version. And I'll show you I'll show you that a little later here, but uh, you can cut it in half and build two five or two uh, yeah five foot units. Okay, what you want is two two by fours treated that are ten feet long. To support the bottom, I had originally cut some two by fours and used them. Later on, I didn't do that. I built thirteen complete units. And I found after building the first couple that I really didn't need that. I could still level the unit when I was done and it was very stable and it didn't need that. So that's your choice if you want to put some uh, little cross members across the bottom to do that. But anyway, we want the two 2x10s, two okay? And now you can leave them just natural treated or you can stain them and really make them look nice if you want. Then what you want to get is a 10 foot vinyl rain gutter. Okay, get two end caps, the ones and you're going to want to glue them on, okay, or however the manufacturer recommends. They're going to try to sell you this really expensive uh, rain gutter glue cement, forget it. First of all, try an all-purpose PVC cement, that's what I, but use a cleaner, a PVC cleaner on your end caps and the rain gutter first. Then let that dry and then glue that, put glue on both the cap and the rain gutter and push it on, hold it for a couple seconds until it's locked on and let it dry. Uh, I built all mine with the standard PVC all-purpose cement and it's worked fantastic, okay? Now we're going to mount these across the leading edge of these 2x4s. So what you want to do to hold that, you're going to use what's called pole barn screws or stitching screws. They're about three, quarter in, three quarters of an inch long. That's the ones I use. You can get them in the Menards and uh, other Home Depots and places like that. Uh, they're, a, they're a galvanized, color, they're a painted little screw. They use them on pole barns, putting trim and stuff. And they have a rubber washer on, which I really like. Now, I can you can just drill. I have just a little adapter that goes right on my drill that goes right on this little hex head on this screw. And I just... Bloop, and just right across the leading edge, we hold the, the vinyl rain gutter up to the top of the 2x4 on end and just screw them in about 6 inches apart all the way down. Do that and then flip it over and do the other side. Now you've got the whole rain gutter supported on these 2x4s. You've got a platform to do it. Okay, now to decide uh, what kind of float you want to put on this. If you're going to just build one unit. You just say, okay, I want to just try one unit and uh, 
whatever. Here's where a little deciding point comes in. This is the standard float uh, that you can use. It's a, a three-quarter inch, or I mean a half inch male uh, adapter on it. You screw on a, a swivel, and I'll show, here's a picture of that. And that make, converts that into a standard garden hose fitting. You can screw a garden hose. If you're going to build just one unit, want to try it, no big deal. Just order that float with the half inch male nipple and get that adapter. And they have them at Home Depot. And screw that on with a little Teflon tape. And now you're all set to hook your garden hose. This, I like the adjustable floats, the ones I'm showing you, because mount that as high as you can on the end of the ring gutter. It gives you more. Uh, variance in how you can adjust the float level of the float. So you want to drill that hole to mount that float as, as high as you can and still leave some material on the end cap there above it. Now you, uh, if you decide, okay, I want to build two or three or maybe more, then what you want to do is maybe go with, like I did, because uh, I've got multiple ones, uh, the quarter inch barb fitting float. Same float, only thing is it has a quarter inch barb, an adjustable float too. But what I like about this is you can take inexpensive plastic tees and then get quarter inch hose and just run from one and daisy chain them together. I've got 13 rain gutters hooked together with one garden hose. It's really nice. Now, if you wanted to put some inline little shut off hoses, valves, you can order them. There's there are specialty ones around you can find them, but I just hook them up that way and it just it works fantastic. I, I don't have 15 dozen garden hoses running all over the garden. Uh, my whole garden system is a fenced in area because I'm out in the country to keep deer and stuff out. But what I did is I just laid down carpet in my whole garden area that I'm gonna I, that I put my rain gutters. Because uh, I don't have to worry about weeds growing up around my rain gutter system stuff. I just took a designated area, fenced it in, and I you can go get uh, used carpet. And some of this carpet is in great shape. I had put landscape fabric down the year before and tried it, and it just wore out right away. My wife says, go get carpet. You know, they give it away, and they do. I called, and they, yeah. I said, do you have any free carpet to give away? I called these carpet places. Well, they take it out all the time. they got to pay to get rid of it. So they were glad to give it to me. So I rolled out nice carpet. I got green carpet and red carpet all, laying all in my garden area, which is really nice. I got all my cucumbers running over here and tomatoes. I mean, uh, uh, squash and, and watermelon, everything out in the carpet. It, it, it's just kind of neat. I always kid people, take off your shoes before you come in my garden. They get a kick out of that. But anyway, back to the rain gutter. Okay, so depending on if you want to build multiple ones, You'll want to go with the barb fitting uh, on that because it's easy to daisy chain multiple ones together and then you can just hook it to one uh, uh, regular quarter inch female threaded garden hose adapter. You can get those at like Ace Hardware and stuff. That they're pretty much available everywhere. Okay, after you've got this done, okay, then what you want to do is, here's a choice here. There is another way to do it. If you don't want to mount a float in each one, a friend of mine, uh, Brad Quaver, one of the first guys to ever build one of my systems when I posted it, he took three of his rain gutters and he didn't, because you're going to have 10 feet and you're going to be able to put nine five-gallon buckets on there, okay? And But you have to leave enough room for that float to go up and down. Well, what he wanted to do is not sacrifice that one spot for the float. So he, what he did is he eliminated and did not mount any floats in the rain gutter. He built the rain gutters and then just run a piece of pipe out or some adapter and hooked all three of them together and then just ran it to a bucket, which you can use standard uh, guard, and then mounted a float in the bucket and then the water, of course everything has to be level, all three of them, for it to work, but it does work that way. Then you just adjust the water level in the bucket, and it feeds out into all three rain gutters. That is another way you can do it. Uh, you can That way you can also completely cover if you're worried about mosquitoes. And, and I had talked in uh, understanding the rain gutter uh, grow system uh, earlier video. I explained that I don't have any problems because I get mine well-established, my plants, and then uh, they're changing the water over frequently enough, and I don't have stale water, which mosquitoes like, and I don't have any breeding problems with. But if you are concerned about algae or that, you could at this time 
you could cover or even if you don't uh, put a float in or if you do put a float in just cover it with plastic or just roll plastic you can just get this roll plastic lay that out staple it down and leave just enough room for that float and then you could just take some kind of opaque plastic container like a oh like a I don't know Tupperware type container and flip it over and just have that set over top the float so it still can move up and down but everything else is covered now there's no out light that gets in there there's no uh, mosquitoes and then you can just cut a tiny slit in the plastic where your net cups gonna go through which we're gonna talk about uh, next after you build these rain gutter systems and you've leveled them okay now you're going to take we need a container to grow them in okay there's a couple different ways we can go here you can use a standard five gallon plastic container which a uh, bucket I get mine at Walmart bakery department uh, a lot of other bakeries food services you can get them that's a food grade one I drill a two and seven eighths inch hole through that okay and then you want to put a three inch net cup through that okay I used to, uh, I had listed on my earlier videos where to get them uh, some different suppliers anymore and I'll have links below, the, check all the links below this video, you'll see the links to everything. Uh, Amazon has them all the time and they're reasonable and the mini float valves Amazon has them all the time. I have them listed in there so you can order everything. If you, if you have a hydroponics place in your city or close to you, you might be able to get the net cups there. You don't even really have to use a net cup. I do because they're inexpensive and they're all uniform. You can take like a yogurt cup and take a little soldering iron with the little pointed ones, you know, and heat it and pop little holes through it and use that. But uh, I just found that they're, I like they're uniform. They're all the same. They're tough. And uh, it's just an industry standard thing. Once you've got these, and I'll go into this in the future, how to plant this. I just want to cover right now in this video, not make it too long, just how to build the initial system itself and how to um, uh, make the containers in which to plant in, okay? Matter of fact, here's a picture a guy sent me yesterday, this David. Really, now he's building his for the first time. He built six of the rain gutter systems. He's going to daisy chain them together. I, he had already figured it out, and he ordered the quarter-inch nipples, you can see here, uh, quarter-inch uh, float valves, so he can hook them up. And they stack up real nice. He's got them in his garage all ready to go. So that's just, I just want to show you that. Okay, once you've built these, now, like I said, you can take the five gallon buckets, drill a two and seven eighths inch hole, and the three inch net fits tight. You can use a three inch hole saw. If you have a hard time finding a two and seven eighths inch, it will work. I just like the little bit tighter fit of the two and seven eighths. Yeah, you can find them on Amazon too. I know uh, Ace Hardware has the two and seven eighths inch. You have an Ace Hardware in your and some people said, can I use plastic totes? Yeah, yes, they were great. What I recommend is you use two net cups in it, okay? Space them evenly in the bottom, drill, drill two two and seven eighths inch holes, put two net cups through. And now, because basically, they, even in a five gallon bucket, you're looking at roughly about a square foot. Uh, you know, it's a square foot long and a square foot wide. Well, the, the tote's about the same thing. It's about Two feet. So if you put you evenly spaced two net cups, you're going to end up just great. Uh, let me see. We got uh, that should be pretty much it on just building the initial unit. If you have any questions, go ahead and you can either uh, click on my or go to and send me a message, or you can just put a comment underneath here. I have to hopefully tried to cover everything. Another thing. Oh, here's a plastic tees, and you can get them at Ace Hard or any standard place. The hook from those a little plastic barb from one, then you go over to a plastic T and then hook to the next rain gutter and the next rain gutter and the next rain gutter. Okay? That that pretty much summarizes it. Now in this next video I'll get in exactly what kind of potting mixes you can use, how you can make your own potting mix. Can I add any um uh, like miracle grow to the rain gutter. Can I put worm tea in there? I want to go through that, but I, I want to cut this short now. So on the next video coming up here really shortly, in the next couple of days I'll get it posted. I'll go into exactly how to plant it, what amendments you want to put in, uh, some lime and Epsom salts, things you want to put in your potting mix so you get fantastic results. 
how to stabilize stabilize them. Uh, if you're going to raise tall, indeterminate type tomatoes and like a trellis type thing, we'll get into all that on in the next video. Okay. Anyway, this is Larry up in Brainerd, Minnesota. Ciao.